It's not just um, a symbolic act. Wisdom and gifts are imparted in the laying on of hands. There should be an expectation that you should gain something from that impartation. It's not just a game. It's not just something we do so that people can watch and go, oh, that person's now you know, been touched and told that they are now in the clergy. There is an impartation. And we see that right through scripture. Elijah and Elisha, there is, you know, this is something that has been handed down. Something that God wants us to have. He wants us to have that continuity. As Moses was face to face with God, as, as God was with Moses, he would be with Joshua. It says in Joshua, you know, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because he, he was the, the leader that Moses had actually ordained and laid hands upon. So God was going to fulfill his promise that this is the way we do things in the body of Christ, in the church, right through. And then thirdly, there's something else that comes out of this passage, and that is that, as I said just now, God knew Moses face to face. <coughs> and uh, it says here in verse 10, but since then there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses. No prophet has arisen in Israel like Moses. Whom the Lord knew face to face. Nobody has ever seen God. But Moses was known face to face. So we know that Moses couldn't look on God, God's face... He couldn't see him, his face, but he was hidden in the cleft of the rock as God's glory passed by. So he got as close as any man has ever gotten to the presence and glory of God in that time. But something else happens when we come into the New Testament. People actually looked upon the face of God when Jesus walked the earth, something had changed. God had transitioned. God had jumped the gap between a holy and righteous God, a God who lives in spirit, who lives in unapproachable light, a God who is spirit, jumped the gap and manifested himself as a man. And so we can see something very, very important here that the disciples saw Jesus face to face. And we know now that we're not to live by, by sight, we're to live by faith. But it's faith in that Jesus, the same Jesus, that over 500 disciples saw that he had risen from the dead. Now, Jesus didn't rise from the dead for nothing. He rose from the dead to redeem us Amen. and to help us to know that we too will be risen from the dead. We will, we have an immortal soul that will either live on, we're told either in hell or in heaven. And so, through Jesus Christ, we are going to come to that place where we will meet God face to face. But we won't be consumed. We won't be burnt up. Because we will be clothed with Christ. And we can actually know God. And God knows us. He knows the very number of hairs on your head. God can know you intimately. God does know you intimately anyway. But in terms of you being adopted into his family and becoming a Christian through Christ, you become somebody who God knows to the degree of writing your name in that Lamb's book of life. That's important that you stand on that and you have assurance that you know that. 
Now, if somebody is not saved, they will show they're not saved. If somebody is saved, then there will be an assurance. It's funny, we were talking about this yesterday, about knowing whether I'm saved or not. It's, it, can, it, it is a very simple thing, but at the same time it's also can be very complicated because we can, we can come to God in what we think is the right way and find that we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We can find that maybe we've got it wrong about our salvation. And maybe it's all just a mental assent. You know, say this prayer after me, and now I'm going to pronounce you a Christian. It doesn't work like that. That's the evangelical heresy that's gone on for years. It's not right to do that. Because it's a mental decision. But something has to change in your heart. And okay, it may be this start. It may be this seed. It may be once you've made that decision to follow Christ that you're going to learn more and that you are going to eventually be born again. But Jesus says you have to be born again of the Spirit, not just of a mental decision. So you need to be working out your salvation with fear and trembling to make sure that you really are known by God and that you know God that you really do know God face to face, that there is a relationship with God. And so many people have so many ideas of how they're going to be saved when it comes to the whole question of their eternal destiny. And there are people who have decided that because they love God so much, that obviously God is going to save them. But it doesn't tell me that in here. It doesn't tell me that I get saved through being good enough for God or by doing works. It tells me that I'm saved by faith in what Jesus did for me. Not what I do for God. Not about how much I love God. It's about what Jesus did. Now obviously once we have that really understood, then we go on to know God more. We have relationship with God more because we're trusting and standing on the rock. And once you're standing on the rock, you're not likely to fall off it. But you have to make sure you're standing on the rock. That's why we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That's why we need to make sure that God does know us face to face and that we really do know God. And that we have been born again of the Spirit, not just of a decision in our minds. We can go on forever on that subject, but... That's basically what we're saying here about knowing God face to face. And Moses was one of these people that knew God. He really did know God. He spent a great deal of time with God. And then he passed on the wisdom that he got from God to Joseph. To jo sorry, to Joshua. Joseph. No, no, that's me. Okay. So this is the new Moses. This is the new Joshua. In this sense, you know, ordination. That's what happens in the same way that happens with you. So this is what we have to be aware of, that you know, we're handing down this apostolic succession people might poo-poo out there um, in the independent churches, but that's their problem, not ours. The reason we do it is because it has a history in biblical significance that we adhere to as handing down the faith as delivered unto the saints. And then we go on to Leviticus chapter 19.